Hi everyone. In this video we're going to talk about permanent magnets, electromagnets, and inductors in perhaps a way that uh, you haven't seen before. When I was a kid and got my first toy magnet, uh, they were pretty junky back then, not very strong. Nothing like the magnets we have today. But I uh, picked up nails and paper clips and saw how they repelled and attracted each other. Uh, all these, I would call local effects, the things that happen right in here near the magnet. But I also learned about the compass and how it could be affected by a magnet a thousand miles away, uh, the North and South Pole. So, in a way, that was extremely intriguing on its own. So, uh, through the years, I learned more about permanent magnets, electron spins, magnetic domains. And I must say, I haven't really found the explanations very satisfying. Electromagnets are actually uh, much easier to truly understand from a physics standpoint. So, uh, in terms of the projection of the field of a magnet into space, now this magnet is polarized this way, face to face, not end to end like most bar magnets are. But at any rate, what happens when you rotate a magnet? Uh, does the field go out to infinity? Does it travel at the speed of light? Uh, can someone detect my magnet here in outer space? Uh, let's examine some of these things and uh, I have some demonstrations that might help us understand magnets and inductors from a different uh, point of view. Here's a uh, DC motor that's capable of going about 5,000 RPM. And here's my hand for comparison of size. And I have it sitting here in front of an oscilloscope so that we can view a waveform and the motor at the same time. And I'm operating the motor from a variable DC supply. Now here's a shaft coupling that I've drilled and stuck a magnet through. And there's a similar, well, the same kind of magnet in the background for a size comparison. So I'm going to attach this to the shaft of the motor. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, here is a coil of wire that I've attached to leads of the oscilloscope. And what I'm going to do is bring this near the rotating magnet, and we can look at the waveform on the oscilloscope. Okay, as I move away from the shaft, you see the amplitude goes down. And the waveform changes because the shape of the field is changing depending on the distance from the rotating magnet.
Okay, at about five inches away, uh, I can no longer detect much of a signal. But as we move in closer, the amplitude of the signal drastically increases. So I'm going to change to a different coil and we'll do this again. Okay, here's a much uh, larger coil. It's about three inches in diameter. And uh, you can already see I'm further away from the motor than I was before. And uh, we can see the signal. Unfortunately, I have wires in the way here, but there we're roughly 12 inches away, and I can still see the signal. And I can't see much of it anymore. And I'm about the width of the scope away. So you can see the size of the coil makes a big difference on picking up the field because there's more field uh, going through the turns. Sort of like a telescope. The bigger the, or <laughs> the, bigger the telescope, the more light it gathers. So here, the bigger the coil, the more flux goes through it. Okay, our motor was uh, spinning at 5,000 RPM. RPM means revolutions per minute. There's, uh, of course, 60 seconds in a minute. So, turns out our magnet was spinning at 83 revolutions per second. And so that means the sine wave that we were seeing on the oscilloscope was at 83 hertz. So we were detecting an 83 hertz magnetic wave at distances from the rotating magnet. Now, can this uh, be considered to be a radio signal? So why am I showing a uh, picture of submarines at this point? Well, it turns out that Communications with deeply submerged submarines uh, can only occur at very low frequencies. It turns out that uh, extremely low frequency radio waves can penetrate uh, salt water. So this is used or was used at one time to communicate with submarines. Uh, I have a link under the Show More tab to an article about this. The uh, U.S. system used 76 hertz and the Russian system uh, used 82 hertz. So uh, my motor luckily uh, was generating 83 hertz so I wasn't quite on the uh, Russian frequency uh, where I might have uh, accidentally uh, issued a uh, missile launch command. So I'm glad that didn't happen. Okay, here we have a, a magnet that's polarized in that direction. And we have a compass. And I'm going to turn the magnet. And you can see that the compass follows. Now if I turn at one revolution per second, roughly, 
that would indicate uh, a radio wave of one hertz. If I took 10 seconds to complete a revolution, that would be a radio wave of one-tenth of a hertz. Now, when the magnet's sitting still, is that a radio wave of zero hertz? Okay, here's a uh, electromagnet, just many turns of a fairly fine wire, in this case on a number eight machine screw. And when we connect it to our power supply, we can pick things up, and when we disconnect it, it loses its magnetism. Uh, that was a ferrite bead. Here's a steel screw. Here's a couple paper clips. So, in the case of this, we have a fixed magnetic field, just like the permanent magnet, as long as the power is applied. So if I spun this, uh, we should be able to create a traveling magnetic field, just like we did by spinning the magnet. But of course we don't have to do that. We can just apply power and disconnect it and send out magnetic pulses. We can also apply a sine wave of current to the electromagnet and send out sinusoidal magnetic fields. Now it turns, an electro, it turns out an electromagnet is also an inductor and uh, I'll show you some more with a uh, different type of inductor that uh, can do interesting things. Okay, here's the uh, inductor I was talking about. It's really the same coil we were used, using to pick up the uh, field from the rotating magnet. In this case, I'm going to drive current into the coil. This is a uh, basically an audio amplifier in breadboard style. And I'm going to drive that from a uh, function generator that's set at 100 kilohertz. Now I'm triggering the scope from the input signal so that the uh, waveform is, is not going to trigger off of uh, what we pick up. So here's the same pickup coil we used before. Okay, here we see that the field is fairly uniform in the center of the coil. Of course, it increases when I get near the actual wires. It's fairly uniform. And then once I reach the wires, maybe it'll show better this way, the field gets weaker. So here, there's a point where the coil is picking up half of the field in the coil and half of the field outside the coil. And if I keep going, now you see we have a peak in the center of the screen. It's on this vertical line here. But if I go inside the coil, the waveform is inverted. Now you can see it's weaker outside, but fairly uniform if I can stay at the same distance from the coil. 
so we can sort of get an idea of the shape of the field. Now if I tilt the coil, the pickup coil, as we go around, you see the pickup uh, voltage did not change polarity this time. So that tells us the field is coming out here, going around, and back in the bottom. So with a pickup coil like this, we could actually map the magnetic field and get a feel for what it looks like. So now how far away does this field go? We'll put the scope on maximum there. And I'm about a f about 12 inches away there. We have some parasitic oscillations going on, and you can see them now and then. Now, the field extends out in this direction as well. And I'm just beyond the edge of the scope now. So I'd say I'm about 14 inches away from the center of the coil. Again, we see that polarity change. So I would say we are sending radio waves out from this coil. And of course, they get weaker with distance, just like we did with the rotating magnet. Here's a couple of different kinds of inductors. This is a ferrite core inductor. This is an iron core inductor. These are a couple air core inductors, homemade. And I see uh, this video is getting too long, so we'll have to continue in part two. And in part two, I'll show you some truly magical things about inductors. So be sure and subscribe so you can get part two as soon as it comes out.